our former civilian civilian president, Shehu Shagari, died at the age of 93 following a short illness. Shagari is on record as the first executive president Nigeria had. He won elections in 1979 to become the country's sixth president under the banner of the National Party of Nigeria. His presidential term spanned between October 1979 till December 1983. Shagari also served seven times in a ministerial or cabinet post as a federal minister and federal commissioner from 1958 to 1975. May his soul rest in perfect peace. Amen. So Amen. now we've been inundated with tributes, obviously, about uh, the late, great Shehu Shagari. Yeah. Where do you stand? What is his legacy? Well, if you ask me, um, I always like to go first before Prof, because Prof, I will give you the skeleton, uh, Prof <clears throat> gives us the meat. The truth is that um, I think he was the second president in this country, uh, 1979. I remember very vividly because my father was a member of that party, uh, the National Party of Nigeria, and um, your father as well, yeah. your illustrious father. And um, the good thing about that party was that, it, like the name connoted, which is part of the issues we are having in today's polity, it was truly a national party. It was found in every nook and cranny. And I think that was the idea of the PDP initially by the founding, founding fathers to try and get a party that will be all encompassing so that no area of the, com of the country will be complaining and all that. But back to Shagari as a human being and as a, you know, looking at the kind of tributes we've heard about him, he was said to have been someone who just wanted to be a senator, you know, but we know about Nigeria. Usually it is people that thrust this thing upon you. All our leaders have all been reluctant. Remember when Olusegun Obasanjo came out of prison, when he almost died in Abacha's Gulag? And they went to him and said, it has to be you again. And he said, that was when there was the issue of your father's, um, uh, your father's mandate. And they realized that they had to leave it in Yoruba land as a kind of appeasement. And the first question he said to them was, how many presidents do you want to make of me? But eventually he went in there. And um, that seems to be the recurring uh, decimal in Nigerian politics, if you ask me. Those that want it, that prepare for it, somehow they never seem to get it. And um, the people that control this thing, like they do everywhere, they always look for someone, maybe they think someone that they think is pliable or something, that they give it to. How Shakespearean. Some, <laughs> some are born great, some achieve greatness, That's and some right. have greatness thrust upon them. You, you, you can call it that. Right. But this um, gentleman that has just passed on was said to have been a very nice man in disposition. He did a few things. I can remember his legacy, especially in housing. You know, uh, they built a lot of houses then. I remember that was a cardinal program of the, of the NPN. And then at his time, there was the supremacy of the party, because I remember the chairman was Adisa Akinloye. You know, everything was, you know, cut and straight. The party was in charge of party affairs, while the president was in charge of the government. Was it, it cut wasn't... and straight, though, or cut and dried? Because the allegations are that Adisa Akinloye overreached. No, no, he didn't. He didn't overreach. I think he was just doing what he was supposed to do with the party. And Shehu Shagari, the gentleman that he was, gave him that, you know, that chance to so do what he had to do. So you don't feel that Shehu Shagari was overwhelmed by Akinloye and Umaru Dikou? No, I don't, I, I don't think so posited. at all. If I think there was a system in place which worked well, now for his human frailties, maybe he wasn't as firm as he should be with the government, not even with the party. That, you know, could be argued, you know, another time. But it's also funny that part of the tributes we've seen come true has been from the present president, who was the one, if you remember, that staged the coup, that removed the um, Shagari. But you know, in Nigeria, it is funny that the way we turn history on itself, on its head, why we're all still alive. Because when I read what the president said, then he should be apologizing for that coup. Because that means if he says the man was such a gentleman, then the why man, overthrow then his why government? Over, exactly. And he yeah. was and his, and he was in detention for two or three years three until years he was so. released and yes. cleared of all allegations yes. of corruption. He was in house arrest, although his number two man and was in equipment. was in prison. Yes. You know, so these are all the things you know. But um, Prof, please. <laughs> you, you've made uh, very valid uh, points and. Um, observations. You see, when you say someone is uh, gentlemanly, 
Yes, of course, he may be a gentleman, but is he a gentleman on a permanent basis? <laughs> no, by the time he was considered, by the time he was adjudged a gentleman, he really was a gentleman by that time. But it doesn't mean that uh, the, you know, being a gentleman on a consistent basis is there. <coughs> now, the legacy um, on which I want to place emphasis is the patriotic character, you know, the originality, the authenticity of his lifestyle. We are used to what we call Shagari Cup, all right? I think no one can easily forget that. Today, the style has been um, copied. Shehu Shagari is on record to have uh, told the world that, look, he's not interested in wearing foreign dresses. No. Hardly will you see him wear or come out in suits, European dress. He has his uh, Shagari style, you know. He has his uh, cap. He has his mania of um, relating with people. And I think the factor of what I will call, quote, and unquote, Africanity, you know, is uh, worth emulating. Now, when we talk about uh, his being interested in a um, senatorial um, seat and not on presidential uh, office, I ask myself, what is the extent of how do we explain, how do we interpret not interested? You are either interested or not interested. Whether it is the Olusha Gumobasanjo uh, empirical case we are looking at, or the Shehu Shagari, is the same thing. If you are not interested, you are not interested. Absolutely. Now, the issue is that to come up with an argument, like uh, Shehu Shagari, we want to have us believe, because the reports have it that at a point in time, the Sultan uh, of Sokoto uh, invited him. A group of people went to discuss with him, and he was continuously insisting to say, no, I do not want to be a president. And the reason he gave was that, look, how had the uh, former president been treated by their people? That he did not want to be treated like that like them. So in this case, we can see from an objective perspective that, on the one hand, he was not interested. But later on, how he now succumbed to the prayer necessarily neutralizes the argument of not interested. And you are not interested. At the end of the day, you contested, you are seeking a second term. Were you not uh, ousted by the military? So uh, it makes life difficult for the researcher that we are to have us believe that you are not interested. So I am positing that the argument that he was not interested is not tenable scientifically. I concur. Okay. <laughs> right. And also with the other example that you cited. Yeah. So I think he's been buried now. And, yes. um, we should just wish. No, but I want to address your point very yes. quickly, Chike. Prof, yes. what do you think of Chike's point? Chike essentially posited that President Buhari is in no place to give a glowing tribute of a man that he overthrew. Well, you see, there is law of politics, and there is politics of law. In the same way, when people make statements, Statements can be written, and it can be declaratory. And uh, what we were taught in the class, level one, you know, zero, zero, one level in diplomacy, you are taught 
to learn how to say something you do not necessarily believe in. Your own is to appease, satisfy, make the interlocutor understand and accept what he wants to hear, mm -hmm. but not necessarily what you, what you mean. Thank you so, for that, Bob. And, All right, OK. We've got to move on now. That's just being political. Yes. <laughs> sort of echoing the general sentiment.